Hello, Chris Glynn here, back with another End Time edition of the Nightlight Podcast. And I'm joined on today's program by author and Bible prophecy analyst, Stephen Strutt. End Time News and Views. Stephen, so nice to have you back with us on the program. What's your topic today? Well, today I'm going to talk about 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and a whole bunch of other chapters that relate to the Antichrist. Sounds good. And also very interesting things I've been noticing in these chapters in the description of what's going on today. Because my new point now is in order for the Antichrist to come on the scene, something major has to change. Yes. Because the way it's set up right now, there is no way that some new leader could come on the scenes, solve the problems in Israel, teach Israel they're doing things wrong and make peace as desperately as needed in Israel right now. I mean, it's a perfect situation for the Antichrist to arise. Right. But the point is that on this planet, the powers that be, they have enough weapons not to wipe out one planet, but they've got enough weapons to wipe out 30 planets. It's true. So there's no way any upstart new leader is gonna come out of nowhere and solve the problems in the Middle East, unless there are other factors involved. And I'm convinced that what other writers have said and other scholars said, that they believe it has to be not political. Political won't hold it. Too many opposition sides, too many people paid off, whether it's one side or the other, doesn't make any difference. That's right. You saw the reaction in Israel with what happened in Gaza, that it paralyzed the world. Nobody has done anything or next to nothing. They're paralyzed because of who is in charge. Now, I think the point we need to understand is at the moment, according to Revelation 13, we are still under the influence of the sixth head, or what was Rome, and what came out of Rome. But we're not yet into the seventh head. And I believe that the seventh head, the Antichrist head, is gonna call for something very drastic. When I studied history of the different empires, what did it take for one empire to totally demolish the previous empire and take over? It took utter ruthlessness. That's right. And I would add something else to that. Man has got way beyond the point of solving things with the military or with politics. It's, It's too complicated for that now. The weapons are too powerful, especially when you're talking about solving a situation like the trouble in Israel, which the Antichrist, I noticed, has a lot to do with. That's right. I was thinking that, you know, we have always talk about, yeah, the Antichrist can make a pact for the Jews and the Muslims and the Christians based in Jerusalem. But I'm realizing the Antichrist doesn't do it because he agrees with those religions. He does it because there's so much trouble there in Israel that he wants to stamp on Israel, so he has control. I mean, look at the stats today. If you look at stats for Israel, most of the people in Israel are not Jewish. Most of the people in Israel are not truly the Jewish religion. That's right. So what is the Antichrist really interested in? As with all leaders, it's control. He's gonna use the occupying the temple to control the peoples. And he considers that the Christians, well, there's over a billion of them, and the Muslims, there's over a billion of them too, a lot of people, and the Jews, well, they're very influential, they're a lot less, but they're all over the world, and they're in all positions of power. So, the Antichrist, he chooses Jerusalem, and I've often wondered why, I've told people, why Jerusalem, why not London, why not Rome, why not... Well, it, because it's prophesied it would happen, Yes. and because also we know that the devil through the Antichrist, wants to usurp God's kingdom. He wants to imitate the coming Messiah. We know these things. But I also think others that who've speculated about the supernatural has to be involved. I agree. From all I've studied, I don't think politics can do it. They get obliterated before they even try. That's true. Because there's just too many missiles. There's too many bombs that nobody's using right now. They're using all the little stuff. They're not even using the heavy stuff in Ukraine, for example. It's all like a big game. But in order for the Antichrist to come on a scene, it has to be something so supernatural, as is so well described in this second chapter of Thessalonians. And I'm going to just read it because I think it's so powerful. It speaks for itself. Now, here's Paul warning people 2,000 years ago what will have to happen before 
this man of sin comes on the scene. And this is Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the second coming of Christ, shall not come, except what comes before Christ's second coming, except there come a falling away first. That's what we're seeing in the world today. A big falling away from faith. Absolutely. Where the so-called Christians and the so-called people are supposed to stand up for the truth. They're not doing it. By the vast majority, they're not standing up for the truth. It's, it's tragic. Yes. Before they're backing the oppressors in the way they talk. I won't go into details, especially that Israel situation. I won't say more. Right. But they're showing clearly today that they're falling away from faith. They're not standing up for their faith. In fact, uh, the famous Steve Quayle, I was listening to a video yesterday, and he was saying, well, a lot of people are calling evangelicals now, evan uh, what's he say? Evangelifish. <laughs> Jellyfish. Why? Because he says you guys should be standing up for the truth and you're supporting the wrong side. And I totally agree with him. He's right. Evangelifish, that's right. Well, that's what's predicted. What does it say here in Second Thessalonians? It says, let no man deceive you by any means. And that's what's happening. All the Christian world is largely being deceived by the lies. Stand up for the wrong side. So sad. Except there come a falling away first. The man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So there's no way you can get away from this and, and spiritualize this and say that the man of sin, um, the Antichrist, is, is not a real person. Everything you read about, talk about Antichrist, is personified. It's a definite person. Absolutely. The big question is how does he come into power in our modern world today? When they've got weapons that could destroy 30 planets, never mind one with all everything they have. They could stop any leader who tries to do what was done in the past. So how is it going to be done? Interesting question. But we'll look what it says here in Scripture. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, all that is worshipped. So that's what he's after. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now I want to point out to you today, if you look at the world today, in asking that question the other day, about the 10 kings that are prophesied in Daniel 7. Who are they? Well, I think we've seen clearly in the last three to five years, a lot of the leaders of the world don't act like politicians. They act demonic. That's true. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of them could be classified as some of those horns of Daniel 7 emerging. I wouldn't be surprised. But there are other factors too. It says here in verse 7, this is Second Thessalonians 2 verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already a work. Yeah, Paul acknowledged even his time they had this terrible antichrist system. You had the sixth head of the beast of Revelation 6 under the Roman Empire. He was acknowledging that mystery of iniquity is still around and it's, it's even stronger now. Right. In fact, they've taken off the facade of so-called democracy that we used to have. And now you're seeing these people breathing down your neck as so, a like a dragon and putting out dictates like the economic world, economic forum, saying what you're going to be like by the year 2030. You'll own nothing and eat bugs. Well, maybe they can try that first. Yes. But I want to point out, I don't think that the powers that be, the powers that rule, the whoever they want to call themselves, I don't think they are going to be the seventh beast. I don't think so. Why is that? I think what the Satanists have to understand is Satan doesn't tell them the truth. He only tells them so much. Just look at history. All the world powers before they fell, they had one thing in common, arrogance. That's right. They were so arrogant, so cocky, they boasted what they were going to do for years. Look at Hitler. The Third Reich will exist for a thousand years. Did it happen? No. No, because they always leave God out of the picture and the supernatural. And it's the same with those who think they rule right now. They, they just keep saying God doesn't exist. And you know, I won't go too much into the politics of things, but just to know, everybody can clearly see that things have changed in the last five years. Drastically. But I would also like to add that I believe this chapter, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, hits it spot on. Verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he that now letteth, this talk about the angel of God, an angel of God who stops the flood tide of iniquity until it's the right time. Because I want to tell you, Satan could do absolutely nothing 
unless it's allowed by God. Amen. And the Antichrist can't come on the scene until it is ordered by God. Okay, this is the right moment. Okay, Satan, go ahead with this. But as I said before, the Satanists, they don't understand who they're working for. Satan is one big liar. Yes. And even those at the top that work for him, it doesn't mean to say what they think their future is going to be is going to happen. Praise God. And I'm going to prove this to you right now. This is something I noticed in the book of Revelation. You go to Revelation chapter 13, and there's a remarkable thing in here. Remarkable. When it talks about the Antichrist, verse 13, and you do it great wonders. So just talk about the false prophet working in favor of the, the beast, the the Antichrist, he doeth great wonders, so he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Now I want to bring to your attention, mankind in general, if you tell people it's something spiritual or it's something biblical, in general they won't believe it. That's right. But if you make it sound scientific, they will believe it. They believe the scientists, they accept everything the scientists say without question. They do. Why? Because they're given over to the spirits of Antichrist. They're given more easily over the spirit of unbelief. People don't readily believe the truth. It's often inconvenient for them. That's how it is at the present time. But here's the verse I want to bring to your attention. It says in verse 16, when it's talking about the coming 666, Mark of the Beast, do those who now say we need to have implants. The very people like Bill Gates, Klaus Schwab, and say, oh yeah, we need to have implants for the people. But they not realize that they're following, and all the scientists that are working on, do they not realize that these electronics they're working on, these implants, that they themselves will be forced to take them too? The globalists are setting up a trap that they themselves are going to fall into. Wow. How do I know that? Verse 16, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and their foreheads. No man might buy or sell, save he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 600, three score and six. So, according to that, anybody who is Satanist, totally unbelieving, ungodly, they'll be forced into getting the mark of the beast. That's right. Only those who have the seal of the living God in their foreheads, as the angel of God, also mentioned in Revelation, puts upon all of God's people. So if you're truly saved by Jesus, you've got nothing to worry about. Praise God. I was very concerned about this yesterday because I was thinking, but Lord, what about all those people who are defenseless and helpless and the babies and the little children and the mothers? and the, How are they going to defend themselves about somebody ramming a mark of the beast in their forehead or the hand. How, we know how these governments are man. Huh? They don't ask questions. They come along, force things on people when it suits their purpose. That's right. So how are even the righteous going to be protected from receiving the mark of the beast or having it forced upon them? Good question. Well, apparently, because God's angel goes out and seals all the righteous, even if they come along with their little technology and they try and plant something in people, I don't think it's going to work. And they'll soon discover that. It doesn't work on certain people. It won't work at all. Praise God. Because as Steve Quayle was bringing out just yesterday, there is a big connection between electronics and the spirit world. This is something people are not aware of. I know an example of this. A few weeks ago, there was a woman, a young woman, was trying to make a case down in England against these, like, I don't know what you call them because I don't use one, these... These devices, electronic devices, where you put the headphones on and uh, you can play games and see things and it's a video game of some sort. But she said she was playing this game on the net and she, it was one of these virtual reality ones. That's right, virtual reality things with a lot of modern technology, AI and that. And she set claims and she tried to um, sue because she said in the midst of the game she felt like she was being raped. This is, a, this is a fact. Horrible. So there is some sort of connection between electronics and the spirit world. And that is why all these modern devices, they're leading mankind in the wrong direction. They're leading a lot of people on the path of anything electronic, scientific, must be good. 
when it's a lie. I'm not saying it's all bad, but certain things are dangerous, as that woman pointed out. But I think they dismissed her case as her imagination. Now, this is just to give you an idea. But there has to be some big connection between electronics and the spirit world. There has to be. That is why I think it's important to keep warning people to not take implants. Even if they're going to tempt people with implants in the years to come, with improving your sight, improving your hearing for those that are old, improving anything in your body, I wouldn't do it if I were you. Do not trust anything to do with electronic implants. That would be my advice to people. Nightlight, keeping you in tune with the times. But the other major point I wanted to bring out was, as others have done before, I don't think the Antichrist can come on the scene except something very major changes on this planet. And I believe it's probably true what others have speculated about before, and, and you've heard all heard this before. I think there was very likely the Antichrist somehow, I don't know who does it, since he's the son of Satan himself, well, they have the powers to do things. But I think they're going to use the powers of the underworld and they're going to put on a massive display, lights in the sky, UFOs on a world level. I'm convinced that's what will happen. And for different reasons. Because at the moment, how, how is the Antichrist, how could he even conceivably come on the scene and uh, it says he, he gains the world through flatteries. Now, how can he gain the flatteries if a lot of people can't even see him, don't even know who he is? Does everybody watch TV at the moment? I don't think so, a lot of people don't. A lot of people are switching off the old boo box and the news and that, because they know it's rubbish. Yes. The main media, now, a lot of people switch it off, I do. So how is anybody gonna suddenly see this guy, the Antichrist, unless it's done supernaturally? Unless it's a big display in the sky, and like I said, there's a big connection between the spiritual and the electronic. And I'm convinced that one day they'll put a big display on with UFOs on a world scale, and others like Tom Horn, Steve Quell, others have speculated that probably they're going to say, yes, the aliens have come, and they're going to claim, yeah, we seeded mankind on this planet billions of years ago just fulfilling their evolutionary lie, and they're gonna introduce their man, the Antichrist, and because he's half human and half demonic or something else, or alien, whatever you wanna call him, they're gonna believe it. And they won't fire a shot. They'll believe what they're told. It's very possible. And I think a massive change like that has to happen on a supernatural level, or you can call it a UFO level, alien level, whatever you wanna call it, in order for them to bring in the Antichrist. He has to be sound much superior to man and politicians. Everybody's tired of politicians. They say politicians are a bunch of, I won't say the word, <laughs> uh, mostly liars um, go where the money goes. Right. But the Antichrist can be totally different. He's not going to be bothered with money. He won't be interested in money. That's not his interest. Antichrist, a forerunner of Satan in the flesh being here in the middle of the last seven years, it will come seven years according to the Bible, and in the midst of those seven years covenant, based in Jerusalem, between the Antichrist and the Jews and the Christians and the Muslim, the Antichrist is going to come on and break the covenant because he doesn't like the way they can't do what they're told. But of course, he'd been waiting for excuse. And then he declares that he himself is God. That is what I see as happening. That I see happening with the Antichrist, that he has to come on the scene supernaturally. No, it won't be a political thing. Right. Well, of course, it'll translate into that, but something has to change on our planet because it, things are not going the right way. And coming down to this plane, I want to point out that, did you know the globalists are having a very hard time? They've been trying for the last 50 years. I remember 50 years ago under John Todd, how they said, when our man comes on the scene, then all the evil we've done for years, we shall stop doing that as he takes over. But how come he hasn't taken over in the last 50 years? Well, they've been waiting for. Well, I think the answer to that is it has to be God's timing. That's true. It has to be the time when the world has descended into such apostasy and such evil like Sodom and Gomorrah, and it's fast going that way. Yes. We can all see the earth's descended into great darkness in the last three or five years. That's very clear. Signs of the Times. I don't know how much time we have, but 
but I believe we will see the rise of Antichrist very soon because the planet is fast descending into darkness and also we need a savior to return. And the last seven years, that's what is ushered in by the Antichrist coming on the scene when he makes a seven year covenant or signs onto it and the Jews will rebuild their temple in Jerusalem, either by design of the Antichrist probably. And once that happens, the good news is, we know there's seven years until Christ returns. Yes. Unfortunately, in the middle of seven years, there will be the tribulation, and we'll have three and a half years of tribulation. That is what the Bible tells us. Exactly. And from the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and it also shows in Ezekiel 38 that Russia is going to be very involved concerning the Antichrist. That you can read from Scripture very clearly. It also says that with Russia and the Antichrist will come Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, Goma, which is Germany. Germany, interesting. And Turkey. And a lot of people, they're going to invade Israel in the future. Well, this, that's from the scriptures, that's just from the Bible. Lighting your path through the end times. You're with Nightlight. Okay, continuing here. Now, here we are in the book of Daniel. Now, this is talk about the Antichrist. And this is Daniel 8, 23 to 25. And the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance, understanding dark sentences, sounds like witchcraft, should stand up. And his power should be mighty, but not by his own power, in other words, satanic power. He should destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, he should destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also, he should cause craft, you know, witchcraft, to prosper in his hand, magnify himself in his heart, another arrogant one. Yes. And by peace should destroy many. He should also stand up against the prince of princes, but it should be broken without hand. Now, first of all, I want to point out a point here about how Satan operates. It's a bit like the Klingons series in Star Trek. Those at the top that instruct those under them know that those under them are dangerous. Therefore, they only tell them exactly what they need to know. And the powers that be like the globalists, they've known that the man of sin is going to come on the scene. But they think that they are going to be a big part of the plan. But is this true? It looks like some of them are going to be in big trouble. We can see this by going over to Daniel 7. We read in Daniel 7, amazing thing. It's talking about, again, the same beast as it talks about in Revelation 13. The seven-headed beast, which is describing the seven empires of mankind. And here, it's describing the sixth beast, which became Rome, and after Rome, it also has its fulfillment in the Antichrist system. And this is what it says. This is Daniel 7.7. 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful, terrible, strong exceedingly, had great iron teeth, devoured and breaking pieces, stamped the residue with the feet of it. It was diverse or different from all the beasts that were before it. It had ten horns. Yeah, this one's much more ferocious. Now, it talks about these horns, same thing as in Revelation 13. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. So you've got these ten horns, and then you've got this little horn in front of the ten, stronger, much more ferocious than they are, and they're demonic. Those ten horns that come up in the end time are demonic. Another little horn comes up before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. So these powers that think they're hot stuff today and think they're going to rule and they're going to make people own nothing and have no property and eat bugs by the year 2030, they've got another thing coming. That's right. Because three major powers are going to get plucked up by the roots, or certainly those who lead those countries or those who put the finance of those countries and the ones who have made those countries satanic. And I'll tell you, from all I study... I believe the three horns that are going to get plucked up are the USA, the United Kingdom, and Israel. I agree. At least their current leadership and the current powers behind them, spiritual power is going to be ripped up. This has happened before. 
When one empire, like the Grecian Empire, took over from Medio Persia, Medio Persia just had some of its strongest kings. They had this guy called Xerxes, a massive giant. They had great power. They thought they were invincible. They were so arrogant. And yet, Alexander the Great totally defeated them with only a tenth of the forces. Why? Because God allowed it to be so. If God says it's going to be so in his word, it's going to happen no matter what the doubters and the liars say. That's right. Or what those powerful people who are intimidating people on a world scale in the last five years, doesn't matter what they say. They don't even believe in God, so they don't even know which way their bread is buttered on spiritually. And they are going to get caught in the traps, according to Solomon. A man sows a trap, he's going to fall therein. So will it happen, will the powers that be. And three of them, major ones, get ripped up by the Antichrist or the son of the devil because they can't do what they're told. Shining bright in the dark night, you're listening to Nightlight. Now here's what the angel said to Daniel. He said, Then I'd know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others. Yeah, much exceeding dreadful. Whose teeth were of iron. This is Daniel 7, 19. Nails of brass which devoured, break in pieces, stamped the residue with the feet of it. That's talking about the Roman Empire. And out of that Roman Empire came verse 20, 720. And of the ten horns that went his head. And of the other which came up. So you've got these ten horns coming up out of the head of the original Roman Empire. In the time of the end, ten horns sound like demonic leaders or powers. I can think of at least ten right now we've got in the West. And another came up before whom three fell. In other words, the Antichrist is going to be more powerful than a lot of them. Even that horn with her eyes showing us personified as a real person and her mouth that spake very great things about like Hitler, but I think even more powerful because on a world scale. Yes. Whose look was more stout than his fellows. Whereas he had a fierce look. And I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints, prevailed against them. Until when? Because we know about the Great Tribulation for three and a half years. Until the ancient days came, judgment was given to the saints the Most High. The time came, the saints possessed the kingdom. So that's the good news. The good news is that the righteous and the elect from all books of the Bible, all prophecy, and the Apocrypha books, they all say the same thing. Evil is going to be stamped out. The good is going to win. Praise God. So that's what we have to hold on to. Yes, it is imminent for the Antichrist to arise. And like I say, by great spiritual powers, it will happen and God will allow it for a season. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about the devil and too much what he's up to. Just know what the Bible says. Keep reading the Bible. Amen. And I would encourage people, if you have never received Jesus in your heart, I would encourage you to receive Jesus in your heart, to know Jesus personally, not just as a tradition, but to be absolutely certain you're saved, because I know a lot of people, and I've met them in churches and places where they're not sure if they're saved or not. It's true. And I say to them, well, it's simple. Jesus said, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. John 3, 36. All you have to do is to do what it says in, in Revelation 3, 20, where Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door, let me come in. I'll live with you and be with you forever give you eternal life. So I'd like to encourage anybody out there who might be scared of what's coming, not sure of things, you can have eternal security, know you're going to heaven, know that God's going to take full care of you. Just pray the following prayer. Just say, Dear Jesus, please come into my heart, forgive me my sins, and give me eternal life. Help me to read your word, and anoint me with your Holy Spirit so I can tell others about you, Jesus. Now, I want to tell you, I prayed that prayer about 50 years ago, and it totally changed my life, and I've been a missionary ever since. And it changed your life, too. And it's not a matter of whether your good works outbalance your evil works, and each week you're not sure if you're saved. You are saved. Salvation is not by works, according to Titus 3, 5. It's by grace. Only Jesus can pay for our sins. That's why he died on the cross. We can't pay for them. And anybody who tells you otherwise is lying to you. You cannot pay for your own sins. Only Christ can. All you've got to do is to believe in Christ, throw yourself on the word of God. God does the rest. Well, thanks for listening. I wish I would be out there. 
a great week. Hold on to God's word and you won't go far wrong. Bye for now. Nightlight. You're listening to an international edition of Nightlight, shining God's love light to the world. And thank you so much, Stephen Strutt. And if you enjoy Stephen's insights and commentaries, I encourage you to subscribe to his excellent YouTube channel, the link to which you will find below. Please also check out our Shopify store, where you can purchase my reading of the King James Bible, as well as the other audiobooks that you see on this channel. And you can download them immediately onto your computer or device. This is Chris Glynn signing out, and until next time, may the Lord bless and keep you and make you a blessing. Bye for now.